What is up guys? Alex from Leggy War Games here and welcome to today's Hobby Showcasing. Today I'm going to be taking you back in time a little bit and showing you the first miniature that I painted of this calendar year. A High Gladatrix is a living conduit of Cain's wrath, striding at the head of their sister's advance. These paragons of combat ride the wave of fanaticism that spreads through a war coven. Channeling it into acts of gruesome murder, the Gladatrix's every movement is a paean to the bloody-handed god, her every kill equal part to execution and performance art, intended for a screaming audience and screaming foes. Okay, so that is the end of our little story time slash lore snippet of the High Gladatrix from the Daughters of Cain. I hope you guys have been enjoying that sort of added part to the format where I tell the little story with some background music while showing the model off uh, in video form um, before I begin my ramblings on the painting and more of the personal story behind the work that went into it. So. As I said, this was the first model that I painted up in 2023. I painted this up in January. Um, and yeah, it was a lot, of, lot more fun to paint this model than I anticipated. I picked it because I had just launched the store, my eBay store, um, in the October um, 2022. Um, and I sold off the, I think it was the Arena of Shades is the box set is the Night Haunt versus the Daughters of Cain and I sold all the other stuff off because I don't collect daughters um, and I wasn't really too interested in painting it up so I sold everything else off like the Doomfire Warlocks, the Sisters of Slaughter uh, etc and I kept the hero model because I really enjoy painting hero models and the High Gladatrix here was something very different to what I painted before. Um, I put off doing it for quite a while and then once I had launched the store and I was painting things up to you know, sell in the store, I thought, well, this is what I've got the sort of leftover models for, and thus I made her my challenge for the start of the year, because I hate painting skin, I hate painting white, I hate painting metallics, and I hate painting black, <laughs> which is quite a wide a range of things uh, for a hobby arsenal to dislike that you have to paint quite a lot, especially white and black being you know very neutral tones so they go with a lot of things they make up a lot of cool schemes it's not that I don't like the way that these colors look it's just they've always been the hardest ones for me to paint I know some people don't like red some people don't like yellow etc etc but for me it was always white and black um, were the two sort of main colors metallics I have grown over the years to prefer a more non-metallic style myself personally again I don't think it looks bad I think true metallics can look great um, but when they're really sort of heavy and prominent on a model I would love to be able to paint perfect non-metallic metals unfortunately that is something I'm still teaching myself to do and cannot do of yet um, so I wanted to experiment with this model because that also combined with the skin which is something that I wasn't very confident in painting um, it's been many, many years since I've collected an army with lots of exposed skin, They're usually just the odd face, hand, etc. So this model was a perfect blend of all of those nightmares put together for me um, to test myself at the start of the year um, and sort of get back in the saddle of painting the things that I've put off for a very, very long time. Um, I normally end up steering towards colours that I much prefer and are more comfortable to paint. Um, so therefore I haven't really, even though I've been painting miniatures for a number of years, um, I still don't put myself very high on the pedestal of painting those other colours because I normally shy away from them, which is something I have really pushed myself to do this year and this is the model that started it all for me. Um, again, because it's all that metallic armour, it's got the black, it's got so much exposed skin uh, on the model and it's something that I've actually been doing a lot of this year um, through quite a few of the, the commissions that I've done. Um, the first one that I had after this in the January was a Necromunda, a Delac gang and they were all in black robes um, so yeah 
paint them more black. <laughs> and then after that I was done a couple of Blood Bowl teams, they're sort of third party miniatures. You can see all of those over on my Instagram, each model in detail. But they have lots of exposed skin. The first one was kind of a uh, like big burly, strong men, uh, very muscly, kind of like Norseman style team. Um, and yeah, they're just lots and lots of exposed skin and doing this model sort of gave me that little confidence and bearing point. Um, I also painted this model up within a day. I challenged myself to try and paint a lot faster so I gave myself a time limit of just a handful of hours to paint this miniature up where usually I could be painting a hero model for like a week solid to get it to a really high quality. Um, this time I wanted to really challenge myself in increasing my speed, not dropping the quality so much. Obviously I wouldn't say this is the highest level of standard I could paint to, but for the amount of time that I put into the model, I think that this came out really well. Um, what I would be really interested to do is maybe pick up this model again, um, get another High Gladder Tricks model, build it with the same loadout, um, and then repaint one um, again, like as another mini challenge, and see from the start of the year to the end of the year um, how much further I've gotten. The other team that I painted that's currently being uploaded to my Instagram, I'm doing one sort of figure a day, um, showcasing it off, was a, another third party Blood Bowl team, and they're like little halflings, um, they're all about food and uh, animals and that kind of thing, and they've got, again, tons of exposed skin. Um, since painting this miniature, obviously it's been several months, I've really improved, practiced and in, uh, improved my skin recipe, um, adding in more tones. Um, so even just looking at this model now myself, I can see how much better that my current painting has become in just such a short space of time. Um, but yeah, this was the model that started it all for me. So it's already got some nostalgia to it. It's not even a year old. Um, but yeah, this model went up into this store um, as one of my first models uh, that I did uh, specifically for the store because a lot of the other stuff was like my old collection so models that I've had from years previous um, but this was one of the first ones that when I got round to it a couple of months in I was like right I'm gonna build paint something specifically for the store and that was this one um, I went with a very neutral base tone uh, on the base there um, just so again it could fit into any army um, and I do have a tutorial a full tutorial on how to do that style of base so if that's something that you're interested in there will be a link in the description below for you to be able to check that out but other than that it was just a kind of a standard uh, Daughters of Cain paint job I would go to say I tried to stay as close to the box art as I possibly could with the color placement so you've got the red the black and the uh, metallics in there I tried something a little bit different with the metallic you probably think it looks a little bit darker um, I tried mixing in some black to the lead belcher which is the games workshops uh, silver metallic um, and base coating it with that just to try and get a little bit of a darker tone because I didn't want it to be such a standard silver I wanted it to look a little bit different um, so yeah it came out quite quite nice there but with the rest of it I practiced sort of glowing uh, the glowing effects and two different tones of red so you can see on the sort of belt attachments there's the traditional bright red as I would call it um, and in the whip itself is a lot more of a darker deep red um, so that was another little practice that I wanted to do was painting the same color in two different tones so that when they're right next to each other um, you can tell them apart and they don't sort of end up blending into each other but even though they're in that same kind of style but overall I was really happy with how this model came out and in the time that I did the model in and um, yeah let me know in the comments down below if you think I should do a sort of miniature challenge to myself and repaint this model and see if I can really push the boundaries because I have learnt so much more um, by being able to do that this year is one of my hobby goals was pushing myself to paint the things I don't like um, a lot more so I've done a lot more black I've done a lot more metallics and I've done a lot more skin um, so it might be interesting to see that there but I hope you guys have enjoyed this one and I want to thank you very much for joining me in this hobby showcasing journey if you guys are liking this new format please let me know in the comments down below where we do the little lore segment uh, in the beginning with the sort of video and then it's me talking and showcasing some stuff off and letting you know my thoughts yeah so just let me know what you guys think of that new format in the comments below but until then as always stay safe happy wargaming hey you 
Did you know that Lakey Wargames now has an official eBay store? You can buy yourself all kinds of pre-painted and new on sprue hobby goodness and support the channel at the same time. There's a link in the description below if you want to check it out. I'd greatly appreciate it and it's a fantastic way to support the channel. Okay, see you in the next one.